Hello, welcome back for the part 3 of the deepish dive into filmic RGB. In this video I'm going to be attempting to develop a tricky capture. A capture where we have the sun shining through the very colorful petals as well as this huge area that's in the shadow. The goal or intention of the final image is going to be 1. Make the photo feel warm as the sky is clear and we have a lovely sunshine. 2. Make the tree look colorful. Try to convey the feeling that it was incredibly colorful without making it look deep fried. And 3. Maintain the contrast as much as possible. Since it was a bright and sunny day, I want to convey the strong shadows that were present that day. I don't want the final image to look flat or HDR like. And this might take some time. Okay, the image is loaded. I'll make a duplicate and I'll also take a snapshot so we can compare it later. Let's go straight to Filmic RGB, Options, and let's get rid of the uh, chrominance preservation. This will immediately get rid of some of the artifacts that we can see around this pole. If I turn back to Max RGB, you'll see there are a couple of weird straight lines and of course the, the great big glaring magenta sun. If we turn that off, you'll see that the issue is no longer there. Again, we're sacrificing the preservation of the RGB ratios, but we are preserving the feeling of brightness, smooth gradients and overall a more natural feeling. Let's not forget we're doing creative photography here. If I had to do brand work that include brand colors in photography or CG renders, I would possibly consider using the max RGB preservation method. However, what we're doing here is far from it. And trying to scan the real world is not my priority. My priority is a good image, a good picture, a good photo. If one wants to get the best experience of being there, I suggest Google Street View. While we're at it, I'm not a big fan of Mark's RGB preservation method being the default. So let's change that really quickly. Click on the burger menu, store new preset, call it no preservation and auto apply this preset to matching images and leave the settings at the default. This will apply this preset to every image that's entering darkroom. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to developing. We'll jump to exposure and increase it quite a bit. So about here. Now that we can see what we're working on, I can go to color calibration and adjust the temperature. First, let's turn on the color assessment mode. Set the illuminant to D daylight and adjust the temperature. My goal here is to get as neutral colors as possible. We'll worry about warmth a bit later. Okay, that looks about right. Now we can jump back to Filmic RGB. We've lost a bit of visual contrast when we increased the exposure, so I would like to bring some of that back. Let's move to the Look tab. First, I would like to reduce the latitude to a minimum. That will give us a bit more flexibility with the contrast, as well as give us smoother transitions between shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. Now we increase the contrast until I am happy. Okay, 1.5 seems to be the magic number. Let's do a couple of slight adjustments to the white and black relative exposure. I need less details in highlights and more details in shadows. Let's decrease the white relative exposure. I'll zoom in a little bit. That's too much. Okay, that looks about right. And in the shadows, I will increase or decrease depending on how you look at it. I will push this slider to the left. It's about here. 
Now, we might have set the contrast correctly, but our project still looks dull and uninteresting. We're going to need to do some color work. For that, let's jump to color balance RGB module. We have three elements in this photo. The plant, the house, and the sky. I would like to control the color of the plant and the sky separately. So let's separate them in a quick and dirty way. I will select the plant based on its color, as we have nothing else in our frame that's of this violet hue. Let's jump to the parametric mask section. I'll use the picker to draw a window where we have a lot of this hue. We can enable the mask preview. Okay, so we selected a lot of this plant and a bit of the roof. But that's just because it is reflecting this aggressive violet color. I'll add a bit of feathering and a bit of blurring. I did say it was quick and dirty. Okay, that will do. Unfortunately, most of the plant is in the shadow, but I want to be able to control the color with higher granularity, which means I'm going to set the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights a bit further down in the shadows. For that, let's go to the masks tab. First, I know I want a stronger separation between the highlights and the shadows. Therefore, I will make the shadow and the highlight fall off curves steeper. That. Something like that. We can enable each mask and see what we get. Shadow mask shows us that there's still too much of the plant in the shadow because almost all of it is selected and non-transparent. The midtone mask reveals that there's almost nothing in the midtones except a bit of the plant around the edges. Lastly, the highlights mask reveals that the highlights are just around the edge of the plant. So we want to adjust the middle gray fulcrum and see more of the plant gets included in the highlights and less of the plant gets included in the shadows. And you can also see our midtones slide around the image in a wave. This is an excellent tool. I love it. Okay, we have our mask set. We have our shadows here, highlights here, and everything in between is the midtones. Now we can go back to the master tab. Now I can increase the chroma to make the plant feel a bit more colorful, and that will make our plant feel brighter as well. That's due to something called the Helmholtz cool Rausch effect. I'll link that in the description. Now I have to be really careful here. I want to make the plant feel colorful without making it look uncanny or overcooked. This is exactly why I separated the sky and the house from the plant. The context of a color is very important. If we have too many saturated colors in the image, it will become a sensory overload and it will look flat. The feeling of colorfulness is not created by pumping the saturation value to the max. It just has to be more colorful compared to its surroundings. That's why I'm going to increase the global chroma. I'm going to decrease the chroma in the highlights quite drastically. And I'm going to pump the chroma in the shadows. And I might want to adjust the perceptual brilliance just a little bit, so our plant is a little bit lighter. Now let's make a new instance of the color RGB module, and let's take care of the sky. Again, let's enable the parametric mask, let's go to the uh, hue channel, and let's select a large area of the sky. I'll enable the mask preview. Okay, again, feathering radius, blurring radius. 
and that will do for us. The accuracy doesn't matter too much here. We're not doing anything radical, just slight adjustments. First, I will shift the hue slightly so it contrasts with the plant. Right now, I feel that the sky is a bit too purple. The hue slider is really sensitive, so it's best to take small steps. Okay. That looks... That looks good. We'll give it a bit more chroma, so we have a nice gradient between the edge of the image and the center of the sun. Remember, the gradient is how we convey brightness. Okay, I think we nailed the contrast and the colorfulness, but our overall image still feels a bit cold. You know what to do. Create another color balance RGB instance. This time, let's go to the four ways tab. Adjust the hue in the highlights gain to something warm and increase the chroma ever so slightly. We can zoom in into our sun and check before and after. Zoom out before and after. I think after looks much nicer. Now, did we manage to achieve our intentions? So number one, did we make the photo feel warm with bright sun and clear blue sky? I'm pretty sure we did. Two, did we make the tree look colorful? Uh, I'd say 50-50 on this one. We could push more global brilliance, but we're risking breaking the balance of the image. I think it's best to keep it this way. And three, did we maintain the contrast as much as possible? I'd say yes. I tried to resist pushing the exposure more and the difference between the bright and the dark is enough to make the image not look flat. We can compare our image to what we've started with. I think the image is saved and will serve its purpose as an example for this tutorial and a reminder of the lovely time I had that day taking photos. That's it. I think I've touched everything I wanted to touch regarding the Filmic RGB module and a bit more. Fun was had, discussions were started, people were informed. I thank you for your time watching this, hope you learned something new and hope to see you next time.